Okay, so onto the AEC inspection and building comparison. We can do 2D or 3D comparisons, um, importing a range of, of different uh, external CAD solutions. We can place the um, we can place the model directly alongside the CAD. If it's in the same coordinate system, fine. If it needs to be adjusted, there's a whole uh, raft of tools built directly into Cyclone 3DR to move that data into the right location so that you can start doing the analysis. You can choose where you want to see uh, the deviation color map, whether it's whether you report it on the point cloud or on the mesh, and uh, Klaus will go through that in his demo. And you can obviously perform any editing of the color mapping. So like I was just tweaking when we were doing the tunnel inspection, you can do that and you can then save that color mapping so that you're using the same color mapping for every single project as you move forward. Um, and you can also add inspection labels. This is just something really, really simple, but we've got a measure tool and you can say measure deviations and then you can just pick on all the areas and it will create these little labels directly within the 3D view. What's really nice is they, they uh, persist. You can obviously turn them off, make them visible if you, if you want to, but you can also double click into any label at any point in time and say, what you want to see within that label information. So in this view in particular, there's very little, it's just the deviation, but you could see every single X, Y, Z, Delta, for example, if you wanted to within those labels, that it's entirely customizable to what you want to do. Um, and then you can create a report on the back end. Um, this video, I just wanted to drop in because this just shows the power of the new CAD engine. So we've rebuilt the engine from the ground up. We did used to be able to handle some smaller CAD um, files, but now we can obviously bring in, you know, this is an entire job, and I think the data set which Klaus is going to show is a very, very large IFC from a multiple floor uh, data set. Um, so without further ado, uh, for me, I think, to, I'll be honest, I think this is probably the most interesting and important part of the webinar today in terms of what you're going to see. It wraps up a whole different heap of aspects of the product, everything from uh, intelligent cleaning, the importing of the IFC data, um, sectioning and segmenting the point cloud, and then obviously the inspection. Um, Klaus has been playing with this a lot, and I think you'll really, really enjoy this demonstration. So um, I'll just open up your data set, Klaus, which I think is there, and I'll hand the controls over to you. Thank you, Paul. So to have a look to a little different data set, previously we saw our hexagon house in the UK. So now we're looking at the construction data set. So what I have, uh, over here, I have an IFC model from a construction site, so I can just simply drag and drop it, similar way as we do it in Reg60 with our scan data, simply drag and drop your file, say import, and what's happened now, we can actually choose what do we want to import. Do we want to import the whole IFC model, meaning containing all the floor levels, or we can choose individual floors by itself. So we can see here, we can drill down the with our IFC model, say here are our levels. I already know the point cloud which was captured was in level four. So I can simply say, click on the drop down arrow and we'll load the components from level four, which you can now see just here. So we can simply say, okay. Same way if I do this one for the whole building, it will then look like this. So here we can see now the whole building in Cyclone 3DR. So what we want to do next is we did do a survey. We have our SBUILD model here and we want to do an entire uh, SBUILD check against our design model. So we went on site, we captured the point cloud and now we create an LGS file and we want to combine those data sets. So we can simply say open LGS file we check that we have our point cloud data here. Yes, we can say okay. And as we already uh, aligned the point cloud to the right side grid with our design model, they already are in the right place. There's no moving around. We, we are already directly there. So we can look. This is our S build model and the point cloud combined in one go. So as Paul already showed before, to make the point cloud usable, we can simply convert the point cloud, click and convert to clouds, say the point cloud what you want. So I already did this one here to shown here. And now what you will notice, there's a lot of data still there. We have the outside surrounding buildings. We have a lot of people in there who want to clean the data set. So what we can do, we can select our uh, level four, and we can select also our point cloud. 
and say right click this is our focus area. We want to focus on those two areas and we want to clean those two. So if we go to our cleaning tools, yes, we can do it manually, but everyone who did cleaning point clouds want to speed up the process. No one wants to stay behind. So we can say separate according a distance. So we're using our level four model, design model. And now compared to our point cloud, I say the threshold 3, 30 millimeters, everything was further away than 30 mil from the design model, will be now separated out. So all the people, all the boxes, everything what is now further away will be then split into two point clouds. So basically, we have a clean point cloud and we have all the rest. So this will take just a moment, as we can see here. So if I uh, select, this is everything, what is left, all the people moving around. We don't want to use them um, for the analyze of the building. The ceiling I took out now, as this one will be part of the next floor then. What we're interested in is the good points over here. Very simply, very effectively, we clean the point cloud and have now the data which we can analyze with each other. So we can simply say, okay. And now, usually on a construction site, what we want to do, we want to look into floor flatness, floor levelness, want to check verticality. So we can do it one by one, but why would we want to bother about it? We can simply also take point cloud and the design model directly, go to analysis and compare everything in one go. So in the Analyze tab, I can say uh, point cloud to a mesh. So my reference is my design model. I want to measure and compare to my S-built point cloud. And here is shoes I want to show the deviations and in uh, on the point cloud. I can preview the data. And then I will receive the deviation between the S-built and design directly. So this is our outcome. We can see with your scale bar. So we can simply edit the colors, we can make a threshold to say uh, go from two, or we can also, as Paul mentioned, we can have um, already a preset colorization setting opened up, and we can every time use the same uh, deviation reporting. So here it's plus minus 10, 15, 20, 25 mil. Everything what is outside of 25 mil will be then showed as gray. We can accept this one. We now look on the top down view. We can easily visualize rather than usually having uh, points of grid only measured on the floor. We have now, and it, without looking at the numbers, we can visualize very easily uh, what's going on. We can see here's a floor. This is a poor concrete here, is lower than it should be. We see a lot of areas where it's good. Another thing, we can also investigate the columns and see the verticality directly compared to the design model. You can see that the back columns over here, they drift first out, but we can see that the other columns are good. We can see that the wall over there is actually leaning towards in the building, very easily visual there. Everyone can read it and understand it easily. So from here, we can then Go into the report and open up the report. And if we would imagine if we have just a floor and do a floor flatness, we can have just a top down view, it will show us everything. Now, when we do a whole floor, we want to see all sides of the column of the walls. We can choose between the representation, we can do 2D or 3D. So this enables everyone who can open up the PDF to simply move around, investigate uh, the building uh, by themselves very easily. In the same way, think about now we did the analyze of the data. So now someone needs to go back on site and actually need to know where it is. So we can create measure points and then also add them in the report or export them as in a text file to let them go on site, set them out, and they can do then the improvements on them. Yep, that's to this. Perfect, thank you very much, Glass. I think the one thing that um, that highlights for me is just the, the, the fusion of all the different workflows that we've already talked about earlier on today. 
and then in one in one solution then we've got the reporting on the back end which just gives you the deviation which is is, is to all stakeholders i mean you're looking at that image and even someone relatively unskilled can look at that and see that there is a problem somewhere right but i was just thinking taking that one step further in terms of scripting obviously you know that's something you could look at in terms of automation like the torsion on the columns or something um, and then also exporting contours based on those um, based on those problem areas because you could export that out to a total station for setting out in the field yeah, if it's exactly the same system. way we can also take texture now or mesh back with the colorization and we can just simply put it into VR someone yes. could actually jump into it mm -hmm. and look virtual into it yeah fantastic no so hopefully you guys agree I mean I was really I mean I'm excited anyway but I wanted to show a real world example of how this um, these, these AEC tools will really impact your day to day and 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 that just to highlight that was all done real time there's no tricks or anything there what Klaus just did was pretty much Real time, end to end, you've seen that running live. So uh, if you want a demo of that, then uh, by all means get in touch.